JT Sippers, I hope you guys are doing good this evening. It has been so much going on, but we are gathered here, honey, to sip this tea. I see y'all in the chat. I had to create a whole different room because something was wrong with the last room. But I'm glad you guys found this room, so come on in. And if you want to speak and get some things off your mind, make sure you raise your hand and you will be called to the stage. So right now, um, <laughs> let me tell you about my hot day. Okay, so... I woke up this morning and I had so many text messages, breaking news, Brittany Grinner has just been released. So my first thought was like, oh, cool. You know, the Russians decided to give us an early Christmas present and release her, you know, because her charge wasn't a big deal. Great. But then the truth came out that she wasn't just released, you know, because they wanted to be nice. Uh, good old Joe Biden, AKA old man Joe, actually went through with the swap, okay? Now, if you guys were on my live stream, I think I did this stream maybe two, three weeks ago, where I talked about the Brittany Grinner situation, and I was explaining to you all who Victor Booth was and that he was one of the most dangerous arms dealer on the face of the earth. Uh, they called him the merchant of death. On top of that, he is responsible for a lot of the genocide that went on in West Africa, uh, particularly in places like Liberia, um, you know, some of these governments don't even have the willpower or the money to feed their people, clothe their people, make sure everybody's good, but they have no problem taking money that should be for the people to go buy arms. And he was one of the biggest arms dealers throughout Africa and even in Asia. And so this caused a lot of African nations, Asian nations to basically turn on themselves and, you know, genocide. So a lot of Black people died at the hands of Victor Booth. They've been trying to get him for years. It took them about 14 years to get him. And he's been locked up for, I think, about maybe 10, 10 plus years. I don't know. He's been locked up for a long time. And um, so Russia has wanted him. And I just don't get this trade. Like I said in my live stream, while her situation is unfortunate, I don't think that Brittany or anybody um, deserves time for weed, for vape, you know, nine years. They definitely knew what they were doing. But to basically swap a WNBA player out for a global arms dealer, one of the most wanted men on earth at one point in time, um, to me is crazy, especially when they only release one person. See, Russia is playing chess right now, and I don't know what the hell America's doing. Um, currently, it just makes America, unfortunately, look weak. It just does. Now, you do have a segment of the population who's super happy and, you know, um, they're like, she's out, she's free. But I don't think they really understand, like, the nuances of this swap. You know, and right now, as of about maybe an hour ago, Victor Boot just got on a plane back to Russia, and Brittany is on a plane here to America. So I don't think that this was done, you know, in the past few days. They've been negotiating this for a while. You know, they knew that this was going to go through. Um, and I also believe there's more at play here as to why they gave up Victor Booth. I believe this, this war in Ukraine is putting a stress on not only, you know, the whole global situation, but on us. We keep dolling out, you know what I'm saying? To, I might as well call Ukraine at this point, you know what I'm saying, the welfare day mama. We keep cutting them checks. We can't afford it. <laughs> okay, prices is high over here. Gas is high over here. Don't anybody got time to keep giving checks and money to Ukraine? So I'm I'm thinking it's just it's a little bit deeper that maybe if we finally just give him, you know, Victor Boot, they'll cut us some slack as far as you know maybe hurrying up the war and maybe giving us some gas on the low key. You know, I don't know. I wasn't there doing damn negotiations, but that's where my mind goes. You know, because none of this really makes any sense to me. And like I said, I, you know, I'm happy she's free. But at the extent of this swap to me, it just does not. It's the math ain't adding. And from the time she got arrested, 
it was clearly evident they were using her as some type of political pawn. And the fact that, you know, you have um, Paul Whelan, he's still locked up. Um, they claim it was, you know, he was a spy, it was espionage. They have not been able to prove that, but because he was a Marine and they wanted, you know, an American Marine, they kept him. You have that teacher um, who also had gotten caught with weed and he's been locked up for about four plus years now. He's still over there. I just feel like if they were going to trade Victor Boot for, um, you know, in this whole trade, it should have been for more people. But I also understand war. And I also understand that this is chess. And there's no way that Russia is going to allow everyone to be free for Victor Boot. So... Right now, I also see the identity politics in this where, you know, Biden is not really looked down right now favorably. They feel like, um, you know, his numbers are super low. So how can I get in minority people's good graces by getting out this black lesbian woman out of a Russian jail? We'll make sure to secure a good number of votes because, you know, at least 90% of the shade room is celebrating this. So I, I just feel like there's so many nuances to this. But I definitely want to take y'all's calls. I want to hear y'all's opinions. Um, what do you guys think about the entire situation? Where you stand on the argument is your own personal opinion. It's not my job to sway you one way or another. But for me, I'm not feeling this swap. And I said this, you know, two, three, four weeks ago before this even came into fruition. So um, if you want to speak, please raise your hand. I'll go ahead and start bringing people up to the stage. Um, let's start with Mrs. A. Hunt. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, T, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I am good. I'm good. Um, so I'm like you, and I got text messages today. I was like, y'all lying. I ain't traded her for him. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and then I went, I was like, oh, and for me, it, it, like you said, it doesn't make any sense because she willingly broke the law. Like, it's not like she didn't know she broke the law. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, oh, well, you know, it's just weed. First of all, it was hash oil. And if nobody know, the hash oil is illegal in the United States to get on a plane with. And it's a mm -hmm. felony. It's a third degree felony to get on a plane in the United States with hash oil. It's not just weed. So, you know, we're willing to just overlook it like, oh, you know, it's nothing but a little bit of weed, but we need to start understanding laws. Right. And, you know, I feel like we live in a country, if it's my favorite, we'll just, you know, ignore the law. Free my boo, you know, <laughs> free my best friend. If it's, but at what point do we start excusing just breaking the law? I'm not saying that her sentence was justified because it wasn't. It was, Correct. it was not. But the yeah, fact that no we traded. None. None. If they like the person at hand. Let's keep this real. Imagine if a Russian came here to America and they had drugs on the plane or they broke a law and then Russia says, you, regardless of them breaking American law, you need to let them go. You need to give us back our people. Like, we would not allow that. No. You know? And that's the thing that people don't understand. Nobody can go into somebody else's country and tell them what they need to do. That'd be like somebody coming into your house and telling you, you need to do this. You need to have dinner ready by seven. You need to sweep the floor. Hold up, sir. This is my house. Where did you come from? We wouldn't allow Vladimir to come here and dictate our laws. But yet we feel, you know, arrogant Americans, quote unquote, that we can go there and say, well, even though she broke y'all's laws, you need to let her go because she's a WNBA player or because she's an American status symbol. And that's just not how it works, you know? And so I'm glad you mentioned that because I've noticed there's no accountability um, as far as people making excuses, regardless if it was hash oil, a pound of weed, a nickel sack, if it's illegal in their country, it's illegal. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, on top of that, we gave her for a freaking arms. Like, I don't, I don't know if nobody else understands it, but we're in the middle of a war right now, and Ukraine is winning. And, and we just gave Russia an arms dealer. People thinking, oh, well, he don't have no contacts. I'm glad y'all think that. I'm glad y'all think this man don't still have any contacts. You know, yeah. we gave up a freaking 
arms dealer, like a arms dealer for, oh, just one person, just one. Because remember, there's a teacher over there too that's being held for weed as well. Yeah. So we were going to do this swap. Why not do him too? If we couldn't get, you know, I understand we couldn't get Paul, but if we couldn't get Paul, then what about the teacher? They said, well, you know, he's just over there for simple weed too. Like, it, I don't know. I just, it don't make sense to me. And I'm in, also, do you know today is the 8th, right? Of December. Mm-hmm. Every, on the 8th of every day this year, almost something big has happened. On the 8th of every month this what year. Last month. Hold on, let me pull it up because you know I got receipts. Yeah. <laughs> I got receipts. Hold on. In the news cycle. So, um, let me pull up my receipts real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna just go back to um, last month on December eighth. FTX collapsed. Oh, on November eighth. Yeah, November eighth, and then you know on September eighth was Queen Elizabeth II, her um, funeral. Mm. And July 8th was the Shinzo assassination. Oh, Shinzo uh, Abe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On August 8th was Trump's raid on his Mago, Mar-a-Lago raid. But yeah, so it's like on the 8th of every month this year, almost something has happened. And today's the 8th. Mm. Well, thank you so much for that information, sis. And thank you for calling in as well. All right, let me go ahead and... um bring on the Duchess Six. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Good evening, T. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I hope you are well. I'm doing good. Well, you made a very good connection there when you said that you thought about the fact that possibly this has been planted on her um, in order to get Victor back. I did think the same thing as well. Um, I think what people need to remember that with it is disparity between getting Victor back and you guys getting back a basketball player. Okay. Mm. Um, He's an international arms dealer, very dangerous man. Anyone that sits back and thinks to themselves that this man going back to Russia means that he's an old man and he'll just slip into rubbish. Okay. That's Mm. absolute rubbish. This man is incredibly dangerous. He is still got his connections in the transportation system as well as in the arms dealing system. This thing is very wide. It's international. Over here in the United Kingdom, we have the same problem with extrajudicial murders being committed on British citizens by Russia. Um, There is an excellent YouTube um, documentary that details this. You have a lot of people in this country who act as um, their property developers, but in reality, they are moving money for the Russian oligarchs. And this situation with Brittany Grinder, I think is all tied together. Um, at the end of the day, the gentleman that you were talking about, Whelan, who's still um, in the pr- Russian prison, prison mm-hmm. the reason the Russia would not negotiate and release him is because he's on an espionage charge. Now, where Russia's concerned, and race does play a part in this, she's a black woman in Russia. There is no play there at the end of the day. A lot easier mm-hmm. to send her back, okay? And with Whelan, because of the fact that he is a spy, they would prefer to trade a Russian spy for what they deem an American spy. So that's the reason why they didn't bother to trade him. They would not let him go. No matter how you look at it, it is a win for Russia, most definitely. And they need a win right now based on how they're being perceived around the world with regards to Ukraine. The only problem that they have with this, where America is concerned, is that this sets a precedent. So despots around the world are looking at this and they'll be saying to themselves, well, you know what? If we want to get back our spies and our arms dealers and our murderers, all we need to do now is kidnap a high profile American. Mm -hmm. And there's a possibility we will be able to trade that person. And it's disgusting. It's nasty. But this has been going on for a number of years. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.